I mean, yeah, I was born a Muslim, but yeah. You left Islam too? Uh, what is it? You left Islam? Yeah. Okay, glory to God. So, all right, go ahead. Uh, a lot of them will say that, uh, uh, well, how do we confirm that the, like what Mark, Matthew, John, and the apostles wrote, how do we know that uh, this is true? Because even historians who don't think that Jesus is a myth, you have extreme skeptics that deny the existence of basically everyone. Muhammad didn't exist. Paul didn't exist. If you're not one of those, but believe the historical Jesus existed and Paul existed, they're going to tell you. The books of the New Testament are first century documents. They'll tell you the four gospels we know are written in the first century. Seven of Paul's letters written in the first century. So we have books from the first century written within the first two generations of the eyewitnesses. So that means these books are written when either Jesus' disciples are alive or their followers. So they're written anywhere from 30 to 90 years within Jesus' resurrection. 30 to 90 years. Some will even say earlier. But I'm just giving the later dating of, let's say, Bart Ehrman. So within 30 to 90 years, are there still eyewitnesses alive who knew Jesus and disciples of the eyewitnesses of Jesus who would be who would be alive? Yeah. That's how you know that if these books are written when the eyewitnesses are alive, both those who knew Jesus and the enemies of Christianity, then they're writing when their eyewitness is alive. How much credibility you think would be given to these writings if they're all lies? Because how do you get away with lying about recent history that people were eyewitnesses to if it didn't happen like you claim it did? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see. I see. What... You understand my point? Go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you an example. Let's say someone writes about World War II 50 years after World War II. Now, are there enough people still alive from World War II 50 years after? Yeah. And if that person is writing and he's making up stories and lying about World War II, how many thousands of people are alive who can then expose him and say he's lying? A lot of people. So how did Christianity spread and how did the apostles get away with saying Christ, who was killed, was raised to life. The tomb is empty. The body is gone because he's in heaven. And they got away with it because they didn't preach somewhere else. They preached this in Jerusalem where these events took place. Jesus was killed in Jerusalem. The preaching that Jesus was raised to life began in Jerusalem. How did they get away with it and convince thousands to convert if they were lying? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But they got away with it because thousands converted and no one could say, you're lying, he's dead, and here's the body. And then if you know you're lying, you know you're lying about something, you know you're lying, the person who hears you doesn't know, would you be willing to be killed and tortured for something you know that you made up? No, I wouldn't. You'd be stupid, right? Yeah. If they torture you, whip you, beat you with rods, starve you, and then they're threatened to behead you or crucify you. Won't you give in and cave in and say, okay, I'm lying. I made it up. Yeah. 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 To save That's your true. skin. Yeah. Only someone who's deranged, mentally ill would die for something he knows is a lie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then uh, Can you explain okay. like Paul, I want to give you an example, Paul who hated Christians, persecuted Christians, try to get them killed converted and became one of the greatest followers of Christ and died as a martyr? Yeah, I heard the story. Okay. Can you explain why Peter, who was an eyewitness to Jesus, went around preaching, Jesus has been raised from the grave. We saw him alive and ate with him, and we saw him go to heaven and then die as a martyr for that claim? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. If, okay. Uh, now let me give you one other piece of evidence. Even Bart Ehrman will tell you that Paul wrote this in the year 55 AD. This is Bart Ehrman because the evidence in, within the document gives us certain names and figures that we can then locate the time. So they'll tell you, I'm not making up, you Bart Ehrman, date of 1 Corinthians, 55 AD. Jesus was killed, and we believe raised from the dead, around 33 AD. That's less than 20 years, right? Paul was writing less than 20 years of Jesus' resurrection, right? Yeah. Look what he says in this letter. 1 Corinthians 15, 
verses 3 to 8. And people believe that Paul actually is passing on a tradition that converts were taught to memorize and pass on orally. And this tradition he received within three years of Jesus' resurrection. But he's now writing in 55 AD to Greeks at Corinth. Now, I want you to follow the logic here. To Greeks at Corinth. These were pagans who worshiped gods and goddesses. All of a sudden, they stopped worshiping gods and goddesses, stopped worshiping idols. They started worshiping a Jew named Jesus, whom they knew 20 years earlier was killed and buried. So my question would be, what would lead Greeks to worship someone who's not from their own country? From another nationality, a Jew, start praying to this Jew whom they knew was killed and buried. What would cause them to give up their gods for a Jew and start praying to that Jew? Um, nothing if it's not like, a, I mean, if they, if they didn't believe that Jesus was uh, true, so they wouldn't believe in him. Yeah, but they were worshiping him in the thousands. Why? What would make them worship a Jewish man who's not even Greek? from an alien nation whom they know was killed and they stopped worshiping Zeus. And then these people are not going to suffer because of it. Well, here's the reason. Are you ready? Yeah. For I delivered to you, I passed on to you as of first importance, what I also received that Christ died for our sins and according with the scriptures, meaning the old Testament prophets announced Christ would die for our sins. And he's telling them, this is what you believed. It's what I taught. This is what we all teach that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. Now watch. Not only was he raised, he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus, then to the 12. So he's telling them, Jesus appeared alive to Peter, because they know Peter, and the 12, the apostles. How are you? Now watch this part. Then he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time. More than 500 people saw him physically alive after he was killed. Most of whom are still alive. They're still alive right now. Is that right? Most of them, though some have fallen asleep. He's saying there's about 500 people who are still alive at the time I write writing that saw Jesus alive. Now, if he's lying, how did he get away with it? Because they all believe and converted. Yes, yeah, so he's not lying. Then he appeared to James. So Jesus also appeared to James. Then to all the other apostles. And last of all, as one, one time, he appeared also to me. So Paul is telling them, Nearly 500 witnesses are still alive that you know of, like Peter, you know, James, you know, you know me, who saw Jesus physically alive after he was killed, showing you that Christ is alive, risen, and he lives in heaven as Lord. And not only did thousands of Jews believe that, thousands of Greeks ended up believing it. If he's lying, how did he get away with it? So now with your heart, you have to say this without compulsion. I believe and confess. I believe and confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Who died for my sins. Who died for my sins. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. But he's been raised from the dead. But he's been raised from the dead. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. He's in heaven at the right hand of God. He's in heaven at the right hand of God. I have no doubt, and I know it's true. I have no doubt, and I, I know that's true. And he will return in his physical body. And he will return in his physical body. To judge the living and the dead. To judge the living and the dead. And I ask Jesus. And I ask Jesus. To forgive me. To forgive me. And unite me to him. And unite me to him. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. And Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. And I love you. And I love you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Amir. You know where to find me. I have more questions. Okay, brother? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so God much. Bless. Thank Jesus. Jesus loves you. And he's with you. you. He won't leave you. Okay, brother? Yeah, it's been a long journey, and I think Amen. if it wasn't for you, it would have been longer. So I really have to thank you. So. What, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit using me, we give the Spirit the credit and the glory, and may the Spirit protect you. I love you for the sake of Jesus, brother.